Um, so I was called to diagnose this vehicle. This is L220. 20. So the issue is when it warms up, you'll be having difficulties with the system. Um, Europe. So let me select L200. KL. So 2020, this 2.4 kg. Okay, let me select any of them. Yes. So the fourth code is um, with this cars. What it does is um, because it reports that the check engine is on so it makes all the other lights come on which most of the modern vehicles behave that way because anytime they sense any fault in the signal and um, in the system like there will be a fault in engine control module then the abs will turn on then the abs will allow the lane keep says the power steering and other things to turn on so with this one, ABS crank sensor range and ABS is on because of that. So what I'll do now is let me clear it and see if I'll be having. So the thing is, when you clear the fault, it goes, but normally what happens is, um, when you start it for a while, when you clear it to go, when you start it and it warms up, then the problem comes in. Then the car will be running, but the cluster will be down. The RPM will be down and everything will be down. And it will report that same fault code again. So I, it took me a while before finding the location of the crank sensor. So now what I'm going to do is... What I'm going to do is I'm going to so a simple way you can do is when you take off the tie you have to take off the undercover so that you can get access to the crank sensor so if you can see that's the crank sensor over there and yeah that's the crank sensor hole over there yes so there is the crank sensor hole all over there and there is the crank sensor this is how it looks like and it, i think they said honda also have that same crank sensor so honda also have that same but this one is a bit longer this one has two dots so they gave me the honda one to try it and i found out that that one is short this one has a two dots behind it and what i'm going to do now is if I test my power and ground, everything will be okay because when the car warms up, that's where it starts behaving. So straight ahead, I can tell the client that we have to replace the oxygen sensor. Uh, sorry, the crank sensor because that's how it behaves. Uh, it feels when it is warmed up. So that's what we are going to do. And you can see the location of the crank sensor. This is at the driver's side of the vehicle. So... It has a 10 bolt hood in it, so you have to take it off before you can take the crank sensor out. So I'll see if I can get some of the crank sensor, but before that, I'll test the signal line, the power line, and the ground. Then if I'm getting everything right, what I'm going to do next is fix everything back, then plug it back again then start the vehicle and wait for it to fill so the moment it fills then i know that although i know i have to get a crank sensor then it's 100 percent confirmed that i have to get a crank sensor so you have to remove this rubber so that you can get access to the crank sensor so if you can see the location that's where it is so i'll bring you back during the test so this is a new tool that I'm using now. 
my other power probe is faulty so i got this one to replace it and they are telling me i have to buy a new one so what i'm going to do is one thing i like about this is it has separate pins so you can use this pin for small holes so that you don't open the hole so i'll fix it and use it to measure the signal and know that i'm having my power my ground and my signal then i'll scope it to start the vehicle and wait for it to warm up and go off then from there i can have 100 percent although i know i have to change the sensor then my um my diagnosing will be 100 percent right so i'll do that now so this is the crank sensor and this is how it looks like so when you are getting it use these two holes to find for the right one so um there is the machine that i was talking about uh with this machine you have to set so let me select a uh, dv yeah so now i have to measure the voltages i have to start from so i think this one will be ground okay that is it so i'm measuring 4.9 volt let me measure the second one i'm measuring 0.1 that's ground you can see the green light is also on you can see the green light so the middle one is the ground so this should be my power which is 5 volts you can see my test light is also on which is 5 volts so that means i'm having all my signal so the main thing is the issue is from the <laughs> crank sensor itself the issue is from the crank sensor itself so i have to replace the crank sensor and with this my tool uh, let me focus it so with this my tool you can they have a scope function on it so you can open use the m to go to menu when you want to measure resistance it will measure the resistance for you so you press it for a second then it will also measure die hold and continuity for you and then you press the middle again then you can test components like you can load test them so that you send signal to the pin that's why they've designed it that way then you can move to the next one which is oscilloscope so if you want to use your oscilloscope function on it, it is not that bad. I have used it to check a can line and it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. It's something, if you have it on the go, it will help. And it also sends PWM signals to control units. And you can also do battery resistance tests. And it also measures capacitors. And you can also do this battery drop voltage test when you are cranking the vehicle. And it will ask you to start the vehicle and it will help you to know if your battery is strong or not. So that's the main reason why I got this one. Than buying the other one that I was using. So there is the name. And it's a Chinese brand. And so far so good. Uh, it works as I want. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. So with this one I will replace the crank sensor. But before that, let me see if I can get the signal for you. And there is a Hall Effect sensor. So I have cleaned the crank sensor. When I removed it, I saw a little bit. Um, I saw a little bit iron around it. So I have cleaned it. So I'll fix it back and see if it is going to go off on me when it warms up again. So now after cleaning it you can see the signal now this is the signal that I'm getting from the sensor although it looks a bit noisy but it is okay now so I'll let it run so that the car warms up you can see I just started it so I'll let it run so that the car warms up then I'll check if it will fill again if it doesn't fill then i'll let the client drive it for a while then we'll check the outcome but for now the signal everything is working perfectly and the light is not back on also i can go to um 
and break down the mid fourth grade. And there is no DTC yet. So I'll let it warm up, go to live data. I'll let it warm up, turn it off, and come back again and check if it will start misbehaving after I have cleaned it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. So we'll be waiting for the replacement parts.